Lakers kind of dodged a bullet there at the end uh, and, and walked away with the victory. You take it any way you can. Yeah, I'll take any, I'll take any win over the Celtics. It was a good game. Uh, you know, the Celtics are a really good team. It was another uh, preview of what could be uh, in the playoffs, maybe in the finals. Uh, Tatum is an exceptional player. He is to Boston what LeBron is to us, a shot maker, guy you can depend on. Uh, they played a good game uh, collectively. And the Lakers, uh, you know, they were a little sloppy from time to time. Some turnovers in the third and the fourth quarters that kind of, you know, kept, kept Boston in the game. But overall, they played the game they needed to play to win. Uh, got away with some uh, a little unlucky bounce of the ball there at the end. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll take the win on the road. Yeah, I mean, LeBron much better in the fourth quarter tonight than a couple nights ago against Detroit. He was scoreless in that fourth, and that, that just doesn't happen. And tonight, uh, much better. Unfortunate turnover towards the end for LeBron. But the two guys I want to highlight are two of the guys that Rob Palenka during the offseason said, we want these two guys on our team. Schroeder, nice game tonight, seven assists, the big three-point play the hard way yeah. in the final couple minutes. I thought Montrez Harrell was all over this game. Eight for ten. Eight, mm -hmm. eight for ten. You know, he had a bunch of steals and blocks. He was the energy tonight. Uh, on a team that needed it, coming off a two-game losing streak. Big off-season acquisitions, and they paid dividends in a big way tonight. After another poor third quarter uh, from the Lakers, Boston took a seven-point lead. The Lakers flipped that into a seven-point lead late in that fourth quarter. I want to show you down the stretch what happened with the Lakers uh, clinging to a one-point lead big game, James. And they go to AD, and you're just going to see good Boston Celtics defense here. The strip by Kemba Walker. And look at this, Jalen Brown and Caruso. Brown, a little yeah. more physical, gets it. Big game, you were saying if you're the Celtics, you have to get that ball to Tatum. Well, There's only three get, seconds left. You know, Brown's a good player, but you know, the guy who is a shot maker who had hit the big shot right before that was Tatum. And I think, you know, with that much time left, uh, when Caruso didn't get the steal, I think I might have would have looked for Tatum coming down. But hey, Boston's a good team. They don't really look for a particular player. That's not the way Stevens coaches them. Uh, they do a good job as a team. So that was a good look he had. Can't, can't fault him for that. Uh, just Lakers got the lucky bounce. Yeah, pretty wild last possession. I mean, you know, someone get the ball and just grab it and shoot it. I mean, it was, it was crazy down the stretch. Uh, Kemba was not having a good night. So that's definitely the guy you wanted shooting the ball if you were the mm -hmm. Lakers. At one point, he was one for nine, I believe. I don't know what he finished on the night. Uh, he got a good little look. He kind of kind of pulled back and got Schroeder away from him. It didn't happen. The big news for the Lakers, though, I thought in the third quarter, it, it was Boston. The kind of their unheralded guys who were doing the big things. Uh, Daniel Tice, uh, Robert Williams. Those are the guys who were making the plays. And, of course, Jalen and Tatum did their stuff, too. The Lakers didn't have a counter for that until that fourth quarter. Trez and Schroeder started doing their thing kind of creating a little distance for the Lakers. You mentioned Kemba Walker getting that last shot. Uh, it brought me back to uh, the shot the other night from Philly um, in that same exact similar. spot yep. uh, that, you know, beat the Lakers. But Kemba just one for 12 yeah. Uh, yeah. in this Tough game. Night. So I want to show you some fourth quarter numbers, uh, guys. Tobias Harris was that who hit yeah. the uh, shot for the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, 25 to 17. Those Seven turnovers. turnovers. That's the key. By the Lakers. The Lakers actually had two turnovers in that fourth quarter, and they were both late. One by LeBron falling and losing the ball out of bounds, and then the one at AD late there in the quarter. So the Lakers did a really nice job until that until the very end, last yeah. minute of the game. It got a little chaotic there. What, what a turnaround from, again, the Detroit game. They gave up a lot of points to a not very good offense in, in Detroit. The fourth quarter really kind of erased whatever happened two days ago. Seven turnovers. That, that's an amazing number for, to, to force against, against a very good offensive team, a very precise offensive team like the Boston Celtics. LeBron definitely better tonight down the stretch. We, we didn't see the first part of that. Trez actually got the steal, pushed it up court, and here's, of course, uh, uh, Schroeder's three-point play the hard way. For me, that was a big play, James. You needed a bucket, and it was nice to see someone not named LeBron in AD. Uh, and if you watch that whole sequence, and, you, and you'll, you'll see it on the highlights in a little bit, Schroeder called for that ball back. He went, attacked, didn't go, gave it back to LeBron, called for it back. He had the matchup with Tice that he liked, and he took him to the rack and got the end one. It was huge. Yeah, I, I, I think Schroeder knows uh, when he can get by someone, uh, particularly if you give it to him uh, uh, in front of the defense where he can see the whole defensive uh, you know, attack. Uh, he's really good at getting those angles. Someone cleared out. And he saw that 
right and got the and one. It was a nice play. We needed him. Kind of nice to have there. a great fourth quarter again, James. Kind yeah. of got away from <laughs> the Lakers the last couple of games, really. They stayed, they stayed in there. Since the Bucs game, right? They stayed yeah. in there on both ends of the, of, of the floor. Good defense, you know, uh, made Boston hit some tough shots. And then offensively, they found the guys they were supposed to. AD, some good shots. LeBron with the three down the stretch. And then, of course, Schroeder getting what he does. And then, you know, Montrez, as you mentioned, uh, active, big buckets down the stretch. Uh, we hope Marcus Smart is okay. We're hearing strained calf. There was yeah, rumors of the Achilles, but strained calf, that's, that's good news for them. Yeah. All right, let's get you to the highlights. Lakers, Boston. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, we talked a lot about them on the pregame show, guys. Uh, phenomenal combination of young talent that Boston has made into the cornerstone of their franchise and their playoff tested as well. They've done a nice job getting the Eastern Conference Finals. Mm -hmm. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum with 30 and 28 respectively. LeBron James and Anthony Davis combined for 48. Uh, big game. AD had 25 after three, so two in the fourth, but LeBron seven points in that fourth quarter after not scoring in Detroit just a couple of nights ago. Yeah, he made sure that wasn't going to happen again, and down the stretch, hit some big threes, two in a row, gave him a big lift, and, uh, you know, LeBron's going to do what he has to do to win. I thought he did a good job of finding AD, finding the right people, letting Shooter do his thing when he had to. Uh, it's a good leadership by LeBron down the stretch. Yeah, for all the panickers out there, the Lakers had lost two in a row. People were saying, oh, they could finish, you know, with a, with a rough record on, the, on this road trip. Uh, if they beat Atlanta on Monday, they will finish 5-2 and two on a trip that's going to include Milwaukee, Philly, and Boston all on the road. It's a strong, strong performance by AD tonight. Yeah, um, I, I, I think Brez just comes from just just a little bit of that. They're riding this little up and down yeah. roller coaster right now, looking good at some times, uh, struggling at others. But uh, they found a way to win on the road in Boston. That's always a great win in my mm -hmm. eyes. Let's hear from Frank Vogel. He's speaking with Mike the media on Zoom. Hey, Frank, what was the key to start the fourth quarter there when it seemed like you turned things around? I think we just had great defensive energy. You know, we, we try to talk about playing Laker basketball. We're really flying around on the defensive end, uh, getting stops without fouling and getting us out on the break. Um, I think we had a couple, couple of sessions where we were able to attack before the defense. This was set because we, we, uh, we, got, we put together some stops. So, um, you know, this game was won uh, the whole fourth quarter uh, with our defense. And, um, you know, it's a tough place to win, so it's a good win for us. And Frank, what were you thinking with the nine-man rotation, and uh, how did you think that played out as the game went on? Yeah, these are not easy things. Um, you know, we just felt like uh, you know we're trying to get a lot of guys in there. Um, you know, play a ten-man rotation with two guys playing 37, 38 minutes. Um, you know, can be can be difficult for guys to get rhythm. You know, so uh, you know we just wanted to look at um, what a shorter rotation would look like. You know. A couple guys have to sacrifice. Wes and Keith uh, didn't get in there. We asked them to be pros, and um, you know the guys that that did play, you know, get a little bit extra run to get a little bit better rhythm. So, um, you know, I don't know how, how much of a difference it made, but we were able to get the W. So, uh, we're all happy about that. No. Hey Frank, uh, you're looking a little less fuzzy now that you guys are back on the winning side of things. Um, uh, back to the rotations. How much harder is that when you are dealing with? with veteran players like Wesley and Markeith, who were free agents this summer, obviously had had options with where they would go and, and presumably had roles in mind. I mean, just how much harder does that make the calculus for you? Yeah, it's the toughest part of the job, to be honest. Um, you know, you got guys that are uh, really good players that deserve minutes uh, that you don't have minutes for. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's difficult. They're tough conversations. But, um, you know, those two guys are, are consummate pros. And, now, this is not something permanent, you know. This is, uh, you know, we lost two in a row. Let's let's get a win tonight, and you know, game to get go game to game from there, you know. And uh, you know, we'll continue to evaluate uh, what we got to do with our rotation to to, to get Ws. Al, uh, Frank, I was just kind of wondering if you could take us in some of those final sequences, especially in offense. Um, what were you looking for? How how did the Celtics respond? And and as a follow up, you know that. The, the AD was talking about the transition defense on when Kemba got the steal and, and was able to take it back. What happened there that prevented them from getting the easy basket? Uh, one of the best defensive players of the year. I mean, we, we just run, uh, we got a, a late game set that we've been running. Um, you know, they got us a lead in Philadelphia. 
Uh, Boston guarded it a little bit better tonight, but we still were able to get AD the ball in a great spot uh, with with full space to go to work in the post. They made a, a strong defensive play and got a strip and had an opportunity to, to run out and win the game. But Alex um, just flies from the corner out of nowhere and gets ahead of the play, gets a deflection, slows down Brown, and then, and then Dennis uh, raced back into the play as well. You know, that's what we've been talking about. Um, all trip is just improving our transition defense, that that type of urgency. And obviously with the game on the line, those two guys getting back and, um, you know, getting in front of the ball, uh, both with Brown and with uh, with Kemba on that last play by Dennis, uh, really saved the game. And Frank, you guys do so much film work. I'd, I'd assume that if you're ever looking for an example of how just hustle can, can make a difference in a game that you pick that snippet of, of Alex, um, can you just kind of, talk a little bit more about the impact something as simple as just putting your head down and running as hard as you can can, can make in a game like this yeah well we talked you know that's, that's part of the play harder than your opponent identity is who's changed, who's changed against harder you know who's who's changing and running the floor offensively uh who's sprinting back harder uh, defensively you know the, the sprint versus a jog mindset good job i'll talk to you soon um you know, they're all things that, that we preach every day that we, we continue to, to coach and hold guys accountable for. And, um, you know, quite frankly, we haven't we haven't done it well enough the first few games of this trip. Uh, but we had a pretty solid uh, performance in, in that regard tonight. Jared Dudley saying, uh, big game, James. What are you breaking down 360? A little sushi. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, we're going to talk about AD. AD is a, uh, a problem, especially when there is a smaller... Uh, player on him, Marcus <laughs> Smart, 6'3", 220, AD, 6'10", 253. Not a chance in hell that he's going to be able to stop him. <laughs> right here you see offensive rebound, long length, simple offensive rebound, put back. Here he is in the post. Now you can't go around Marcus Smart because he's pretty strong and he's quick. But what he does, he knows he has the height advantage, just toys with him a little bit, and then goes right over the top for a little 10-foot jumper. Once again, sets the pick for LeBron. Right here, you're going to see a little airspace right here still in the paint. AD's going to attack, spin back, shoot a little floater. Once he gets into the paint and drop steps one way or the other, you're not going to block his shot. I haven't seen anybody block AD's shot from the front. Someone may get it coming from the weak side, but he does a good job of measuring, seeing who's guarding him, and then he attacks accordingly. Tonight, Marcus Smart, just too small, not tall enough to get any pressure on AD shots. Yeah, Marcus, a very good perimeter defender, but asking him to stop a guy like AD possession after possession, it's just not going to happen. I hope Marcus is okay with his uh, apparent calf injury. Yeah. But that, that's uh, climbing uphill from the start for that guy. AD is just a matchup problem for the Celtics. You know, they're going to play again later this season at the Staples Center. Who knows? Maybe they meet in the finals. It's a long ways away. But if they do, it's going to be, it's going to be tough for Boston with this configuration to stop Anthony Davis. Yeah, they're, they're, they're missing one big, in my opinion. One yeah. tough big. I don't think Tristan Thompson is the guy. Uh, they're just missing one player, I think, to go along with Tatum. Big game, no flames in the wall, no spotlights, like it's a Hollywood premiere. When you do your breakdown, you just do it. Yeah, just me Big and the floor, game, baby. No walls, the just the floor. That's you, all, man. I'm old like, school. More to come on Access. for LeBron James, James no. and AD. Old school. They combined for 48 points in the Lakers win in Boston. Lakers are 11-2 and on the road hey, this Kool season. Aid. We'll hear from the Lakers duo ahead in the show. Three Lakers, 9 of 31. Bench points 35 to 15 in favor of the Lakers. In the pain, it was 60 to 40 in favor of Boston. All right, let's hear from Celtics head coach Brad Stevens on Boston's defense against the Lakers. We had some possessions where there were breakdowns, John, but we also doubled LeBron and AD a lot. And we doubled them a lot out at the three point line just because the matchups they had were not advantageous. And so you're going to give up some of that. There were some offensive rebounds that you'd like to have back. There were some other plays in the first half that you'd like to have back. They've got some guys that can just raise up over you at five feet and make it. And so it forces you into doubling before they get to that point. 
Um, and again, I thought our guys did a good job. You would have told me we held them to what 98, whatever it was going into the game. I'd have taken it. Brad Stevens brings up a good point. If you're going to hold the Lakers to 96, I think he takes that every single day of the week. Now the Lakers hold them to 95, but he's right. You play this Laker team and it's not a seven game series. It, it, it's one night, James. So you got to put together a plan. We're going to double AD, double LeBron, try to get the ball out of their hands. Other guys got to beat us, and they did. There's no question that Steve has had. He had the perfect game plan. It worked out well for him. They they dominated the Lakers in the paint. Uh, you know, that was unusual, and the Lakers did a good job from the line, kind of kept a minute. But, yeah, he coached a game that had them in position to win. So he did what he had to do. He had some mismatch problems. He had to double. Uh, you don't like to do that, but he had to do it. I think they did it fairly well uh, to keep them close in the game. Prez, I think that's why it was so important to get a guy like Dennis Schroeder. And, and, and I know he's had some ups and downs just like everyone, but he's had a pretty good year. And I know Laker yeah. fans love what they're seeing. Van Gundy mentioned this in, in, in the broadcast, something we say all the time. I love his speed for this Laker team. People are going to take the ball out of LeBron's hands. He cannot score 50 a game. It's just not going to happen, right? When they send big bodies at him, that was Schroeder that got the Tice matchup, went by him. You're going to need that as this team progresses. Yeah, really good kind of hey, remember me game for, for Dennis Schroeder. And it's not like he was playing horribly, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. But we've been talking about a lot of people uh, during this road trip, not a lot of Schroeder talk until tonight. And he just kind of stood up. He's kind of in the back of the class. He's like, I I'm still here, guys. Don't forget me. Yeah. You go back to what Palenka did, uh, a late first round pick and, and Danny Green to get Schroeder on board. That's a, that's a great trade. That, that's a great, great move. And I like the Laker bench, too, before you uh, get too far away from that. You know, the Lakers did not score a lot. Brad Stevens is right. But the bench scored about a third of the Lakers' points. They needed this from the reserves tonight. Keep in mind, game six, what is this, day 10 or 11 of yeah. this road trip? Lakers are kind of a tired team, and I, yeah. I, I understand why. Day 10, right? Six games, yeah. seven yeah, games been in, around. in 12 nights, and this is the sixth. They've been away from uh, you, I'm, I'm glad Brez brought up the bench uh, big game. We didn't have time to talk about this, but it, but it was interesting to watch Frank go with a nine-man rotation, yeah. something we haven't seen yet. But when he, what he said, when you're playing two guys 37, 39 minutes, you're talking about LeBron James and AD, how, do ev how does everybody get in rhythm when you're playing 11 guys? A night like tonight, I'm sorry, but it's, it's Morris and it's Matthews. And he said, we ask them to be pros. It's the hardest part of the job. And it really is. But it gives a guy like THT 23 minutes, Kuzma 23 minutes, Harrell 30, and Caruso 20, and the bench uh, rewarded Frank by playing great tonight. Yeah, quality, I will say, uninterrupted minutes will yield you some good production. And I think that's what the coaches are figuring out. You know, a lot of times you try to get minutes for pe players here, players there, and it doesn't work out because guys need time to get a rhythm. And I think what you saw tonight, especially with Tucker, he was in there long enough to get a rhythm going, very effective, getting to the cup, making some big buckets. So uh, hats off to the coaching staff. And also hats off to Wes Matthews and Mars uh, for being professionals and understanding they needed this in order to get a win on the road. Yeah, sticking with the bench, James, uh, tonight a typical Caruso line. He played 20 minutes, uh, took two shots, scored two points. Don't win without him. And he was a team high, <laughs> a team high plus 14 yeah. in the plus minus. That amazing? So it's the typical Caruso spot right there. Love what he does. President, I always laugh because we look at the end of the night, we're like, God, everyone was minus in a loss. And, 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 right. and, Chris well, will be plus eight. Yeah, if yeah, if yeah, you go amazing. by plus minus, he would be leading the team every yeah, night. Yeah, 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 so in the MVP conversation. Right. Um, big game. What was it called? The worthy spin back in the day? I think you got worthy another, spin oh, back in the day. We have to bring that back. <laughs> you got another 360? You got the wall, the wall. We got to bring the spin back. you have a bonus 360? <laughs> yeah, we'll just call it access 360. Okay, you got oh. a bonus 360? It's, it's kind of a bonus, bonus on uh, that last play of the game. Oh, I like that. Let's. Yeah, it's pretty pretty exciting play. Big game. I can't believe Tatum was not in the picture. Yeah, I mean, look, they go they go inside the AD now. They're digging. Right here, so he should have passed that to yeah, Shooter because miss, they got a hand on it. Caruso's oh, hustle. Nice. Look at that hustle. He almost got it. Unfortunately, he did not. Right here with seven seconds left, decisions have to be made. AD doing a good job of collapsing defensively. Shooter doing a good job of getting to Kimber here, forcing him to go left. That's a good shot for Kimber Walker, but he was what, Geeter? One of seven or something for the night. That putback was close, but I don't think it would have counted uh, according to the shot clock. But uh, that was pretty exciting. That play was right there for Boston to win it. They got uh, the steal. They got the AD. steal. Yeah. They got the shot. Uh, and they almost got a little putback.
And they got, everything just went their way. I mean, Tatum hit two really tough shots. Yeah. Great offensive plays with good yeah. defense on him. LeBron, like, slipped. Right? I mean, there was yeah, just so things that were happening. Yeah, it was just a weird about. final minute yeah. for, for the Lakers. The, the question is, we didn't see Tatum in that. He, he in saw that Tice get all the way. Tice started deeper than Tatum yeah. and got all the and way there back. for that rebound. Yeah. Tatum must have just thought it was a gone play and just kind of hanging at half court. Well, I I thought, I, yeah, I thought when they got the ball, possession of the ball, it was like maybe six seconds left, 6.5 seconds. Yeah. That would have been enough time to kind of find him, yeah. but didn't happen. Yeah, by the way, Geet, must, he, must be a Lakers Celtics. James has done like seven access 360 breakdowns during the pregame and postgame yeah. show. This, yeah. this, this is a big day for you, James. Also, Love when it. that ball gets <laughs> loose and Jalen Brown and Caruso are running for it, Talk's ticking. At that point, yeah. if you're say, you're just trying to get a shot off because it's hard yeah. to like, oh, what talk is? Five seconds left? Where's the, you know? At that yeah. point, things were nuts. Yeah, well, Jalen had kind of a funny kind of he kind of fluted a pass. And yeah, that just, they kind of grabbed it and found. It was Kemba. a wild. It was a wild sequence. Great, yeah. great first primetime game of the year, right there. Ooh, for, big time about that. ABC. Yeah. All right, more to come on Access. AD made an impact after missing the last game, 27 points from the brow. Lakers are four and two. On he's involved, and he's got that motor going. He's, he's what you need off that bench. He has nights like this, 8 of 10, and, and he got extra minutes tonight. I, th I think that was big for him. Yeah, and some big buckets. His yeah. energy just was contagious, and you could tell his teammates start looking for him, especially Tucker, two times in a row when you're going downhill. They know the Treads is going to be in the right spot. A couple of floaters he hit, uh, you know, some big rebounds. Uh, you know, just the energy that he puts. Extra possessions. You know, when you get an extra possession, it just demoralizes the, the, the opponent. So his energy, the 15-footer, he hit two or three of those tonight. Boy, he's really improved. And if he continues to hit that 15-footer, it's going to be very hard to guard him. I believe Brez took him for your take your shot. I did. I yeah. did. Finally got one right, don't you? Yeah, it's funny. Two games ago against Philly. Was that the one where he... Foul trouble. Foul scoreless trouble. for scoreless, the first time yes. in three years. Uh, last game. Got banged up in that game, too. Yeah. Last game against Detroit, eight points. You yeah. know, neither here nor there. And, and Detroit really took advantage of the Lakers uh, on offense. Tonight, though, yeah. that's, what, that's what he needs to do. He needs to be that driving force and really just, uh, just push his way, will his way on the people. Like James said, a couple of I, nice uh, mid-rangers, too. I know we talk about this a lot, but you know what's crazy and just strange in a Boston Laker game in Boston, James? No crowd. Yeah. Huh. Now, it would have been <laughs> unbelievable tonight. Of, Tatum all, hitting those of, shots. Of, <laughs> of all the arenas uh, and teams that the crowd really is, you know, effective. Beat and LA chance. LA and, and Boston, yeah. Beat LA, mm -hmm. just being in the city, walking around town, they just give it to you. Uh, those are the, the, the two cities that really, are the two teams that really it, miss the crowd. How fun is it beating them there? It's the best. Like in 85, you're the only team, I think, to ever do only it. Only team that's ever won a championship. Yeah, and on their floor. Ugly parquet floor. It yeah. is <laughs> wonderful to win there. It was hot, too, right? Wasn't it hot, hot muggy? It was very hot in the summer and cold in the winter. They didn't have heat. Worst locker air room in the history of sports? Ever. <laughs> Yeah, they, Ever. They the heat it wasn't the even a uh, it wasn't even a locker room. It was more like a chicken coop. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you know we had 14 players. The room held about seven seven players. Two showers. It was just nasty. two showers. You look at the, the you look at the, the championship. The you look at the championship <laughs> '85 <laughs> when we ran in that yeah. locker room. And you can you can see yeah. it looks like a chicken coop, man. Champagne tastes good though. <laughs> Champagne was nice and bubbly. <laughs> 21 and seven. And seven for LeBron. He's now speaking with Mike in the media. Chicken coop. Hey, LeBron, uh, that final play or that final section of the game, Caruso sprints down the court. And just wondering, you know, it seems like an effort play, but there has to be a certain amount of just mental acuity there uh, and just kind of recognition. Can you take us through what you saw in that from that perspective and, and kind of how big that was? Um, you know, any, anytime you have a turnover, you just want to have a quick twist to try to get back and uh, try to recover the play. And. That's exactly what we did, starting with AC getting back, and then all of us just kind of formed a wall. Um, you know, Dennis did a great job of um, standing in front of Kimba, even though Kimba got to his pad and his shot to step back. But Dennis still got a great look. I mean, uh, got a great contest on his shot, and uh, ties missed a layup. So I came away with a, with a win. Frank spoke about shortening the rotation to nine for tonight, and that's been, uh, that's been something he's been juggling with. You know, you have 11 guys at least uh, who you'd like to give more minutes for. Just your experience over the years and, and what it's like having the rotation like that and how that impacts guys night in, night out. You know, I, as professionals, we all just have to stay ready when our numbers call. You know, we're here for one reason, one reason only, and that's to try to win a championship, and that's what it is. Kyle, Hey, uh, 
AD talked a little bit about uh, sort of just not wanting to lose three in a row and then having a little extra energy from that. In what ways do you, do you feel like maybe that extra energy or extra desire to, to break the losing streak came out tonight in your guys' performance as a team? Well, we don't want to lose one in a row. You know, and then we take our we take pride in losing two in a row, and uh, we did that, and uh, and in Philly and Detroit. So uh, we knew we was coming into a hostile environment um, in a hostile building, understanding you know how good this team is, and we had to play uh, some really good basketball in order to win, and uh, we was able to, to to win one possession more than they were tonight, and come away with it. And hey, LeBron, um, you guys obviously every every time you step on the court. Um, you guys have a lot of talent that you put on the floor, but over the past year and, and 20 games, I guess this season, um, playing harder than the other team, um, wanting it, I guess, more has is, is been a, a thing that that's really shown through. Um, how have you guys been able to, to keep that, that, that sort of like, we're going to play harder than you um, more nights than not sort of mentality? This talent can only take you so far. I mean, at the end of the day, there's a lot of talented teams in this league, but it's how far you can go as far as how hard you play, um, you know, how much you challenge yourself on the defensive end to try to get stops, to want to get stopped, um, and just have that mentality. So um, that's just how that's just who we've been over the last uh, year or so. Bill? Hey, LeBron, that, that group you guys started the second and fourth with, with um, THT, Caruso, Trez, and, and Kuz, and yourself, isn't one we've seen a lot before. Uh, you had a lot of success with it tonight. What, what do you like about that group, and, and why was it effective against what they were doing? It's a high-energy group. Um, we all play with a with a with a with a pace, uh, a level of energy, and we just fight off one another. Um, you know, and it's a team that can. Uh, we have multiple ball handlers, multiple guys that can slash and, and shooting. Um, you know, so you know, it works well for us. And, and Trez just demands, uh, you know, the paint. So um, it works extremely well for us. Kyle Hightower. Kyle, I think you're on mute. Yeah. Hey, LeBron, if you forgive the, the offbeat question a little bit, but uh, you're, in, you're in Boston right now, and next week is the Super Bowl. You gave a shout-out to Tom Brady last week, just um, congratulating him for making it back to another Super Bowl. Um, what's it do for you to see a guy like him playing at the level he is at his age and, and doing what he's doing at that high level, getting back to the pinnacle of his sport? Um, what does it, do for, does, it doesn't do anything for me as far as what I do in my profession, but what it does, it lets me know and lets both of us know that we can still play this game at a high level, no matter how many miles, how many games, no matter how many doubters, no, no matter the statistics of, you know, in our respective uh, profession at our age, um, we can still dominate our sport. And, uh, and, and, and also we can bring together groups that we may have not been around for a long period of time. You know, it's just our professionalism, how we attack the sport, how we attack, the, the, you know, um, you know, every single day of being a professional, um, of wanting to win every single day um, in a practice, um, in, on the film, on the practice field, and in, in the games, um, so on and so on. So, um, <clears throat> you know, we, we gravitate towards people and people gravitate towards us uh, because we have one common goal, and that's to win and win at the highest level. Last two questions, Joe Varden. Hey, man. Uh, what did you think uh, seeing Tristan in, in a different uniform tonight? Um, and then, uh, you know, when you play Boston, you know, that's, that's all you see. You see green. You, know, you don't really see uh, the person, you know, when you play Boston. So uh, it was no difference. Um, but it's always good to see my brother. Um, love him to death. Um, you know, I'm extremely proud of him. And the, the leader he's become, you know, he's like a now a vet for this team. And, you know, they're going to use his knowledge uh, you know, throughout the course of this season, both on and off the floor. So I'm happy for him. Last question, Melissa Rowland. Hey, LeBron. I have kind of an offbeat question for you as well tonight. Um, there's been a lot of talk, obviously, about how your game has grown from when you were 18 to 36. How would you say your leadership has grown and evolved from when you were 18 until now? Uh, well, I mean, I just think uh, you continue to learn. Um, you know, at 18, uh, I was the leader of my high school basketball team uh, for four years, or well, let's say three years, along with another couple, a couple guys. Uh, but you know, you come into the professional league, you you sit there and watch, and you become a sponge, and you see, you know, you lead by example. You go out and you practice hard, and you try to 
stick your head into the film and just try to get better every single day and just try to keep quiet because it's bets and things of that nature. And you got your coach staff who you know, does a lot of the talking. So um, I was just more of a sponge, you know, at 18, just, just watching, watching, seeing. Uh, but I've always had that leadership trait, you know, whenever um, it will become available to me and, and someone will come up to me and say, we need you to lead. So um, as the years went on and it just continues to build, it continues to grow. Uh, you know, and I know um, who I am as a person, as a basketball player, and uh, I have a lot of knowledge to give to my teammates and, and to franchises that I've been a part of in my career. So, um, you know, leadership is uh, it's not a not a one-day thing. It's not a one-trick pony. It's an everyday thing, both on and off the floor, and I take full responsibility there. Appreciate it. Still to come on Access, Montre with Mike and company. Hey, Anthony, what stood out to you about the fourth quarter, uh, especially defensively there? What was the first part? Just, just that, what stood out about the fourth quarter uh, to you when, when you guys flipped the game around? Um, we had a couple of stops. Uh, we made some shots, but I think for the most part, we got stops. Uh, you know, Tatum got loose a little bit in the fourth, but, uh, you know, all the shots were contested. Uh, you know, we've been doing a great job of uh, bumping down the fourth quarter. Um, stop the Detroit game, I think. So even in Philly, did a good job. That's how we were able to come back. Um, you know, just buckling down the fourth. Being a team where when we need stops, you know, we're going to get them. Um, you know, playing hard, playing scrappy. And uh, you know, I think that that last play, um, with uh, Galen Brown going to have to lay up and uh, be at the cover to, to Kemba. I just think that some of the for the defense. We're just scrappy and just, just playing hard. Looked like you were more aggressive, especially early, uh, 18 and 10 in the first half. Uh, just wondered what this the season's been like for you, uh, trying to, you know, with everything that you talked about preseason, the shortened off season, how the new teammates, how, how, how would you evaluate the whole thing so far? Uh, it's been good so far. Um, you know, for me personally, I just, I just get back to the tech mode. Being aggressive, uh, crashing off the glass, doing those things. Everything I did tonight, I'm trying to get back to that and what I got back to it tonight. Carry over for the rest of the season. But the things come together very well. We are um, starting to figure each other out. The guys are getting comfortable. And, and, you know, we're doing it. For the short practice time, and uh, we're on the road. So, you know, the more games that we play with each other, the, the better we'll be. Dave? Anthony, Alex, you credited uh, that defensive play he, he made late uh, when you spoke to Rachel afterwards. But you know, there's other guys who have more experience in the league on your roster who uh, have more credentials, who have uh, you know, command a, a larger salary, but he's part of the the closing lineup or has been um, often for you guys. What about his game, about his persona, um, allows him to fit in, in that role? And, and what do you guys like about having him there when it's winning time? Yeah, he's a smart player. Um, like I say, he's not the highest paid or – you know, have all of the accolades or credentials, and, and you know, a lot of people don't notice him. But uh, he he plays the right way. He, he you know locks up defensively, um, makes tough shots, scrappy. Um, I saw a stat where actually does. I didn't see it. Does told me after the Detroit game was that in our losses, and he was, he's a plus forty six, and like plus minus or something like that, which just shows that. Um, anytime you throw him on the floor, he you know, he's always in the you know plus column and the plus minus. He's playing the right way. He's he expecting the game you know in a positive way. So um, for him to be out there and close the line with us, um, you know we trust him. Coach trusts him, and you know he always comes up and, and make big plays. Just you know what we see tonight at the end of the game. Dan, for, for what it's worth, I think he's a plus fourteen tonight while scoring two points uh, off the Mexican. Um, for for you guys as an identity, I, I mean, 
how how fitting is it to have a guy simply just run as hard as he can from one corner of the court to the free throw line? Um, like, what does that say about the kind of team that you guys want to be um, in terms of just playing hard and, and 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 having that be such a cornerstone of, of your identity as a group? Yeah, we just want everybody to do their job. You know, you do your job, um, and that's all. You know, we can never ask of anyone on the team. Uh, from the coaching staff to the players. You know, everyone, you know, knows their role and everyone um, is just asked to do their job. You know, if your job is to run to the corners, then, you know, to, to create space and, and make shots, then, you know, that's what, you know, we expect you to do. Your job is to defend, you know, rebound, block shots, whatever, that's what we expect you to do. Score, come off pick and roll, get in the paint, whatever it is, you know, whatever your role is uh, on this team, um, we expect you to do it at the highest level. So, uh you know, I think everyone on our team noticed that. And when you know, you're not doing it, then we got guys on the same who, who can hold each other accountable. But we have been doing this. So that's why I think a lot of guys are starting to get more comfortable. Um, knowing that guys are going to get on them, and when they're not playing the right way or doing their role, then you know, we're going to them. Last question, Kyle. Hey, D, um, you wound up with the ball after Tice uh, missed, uh, missed the putback and – Looked like you were kind of hanging on the, the net for a second, maybe thinking a little bit. I was wondering, what were you thinking after that finish? And and as a follow-up, is this the kind of win that uh, still feels a little humbling, even after you're winning it? Um, I just been, I don't know what I was thinking. I, I was just in a daze. Uh, you know, a, good, a really win. I was playing against a team that just, you know, beat about 30 last year. Um, in this building, uh, and you know, we were able to, you know, put it off with a great win and again, a stop at the end. So um, it was just like, you know, you know a relief. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, Kemba had a good look. Tice had a, had a great look on the putback, but you know, losing two in a row, something you don't, opponents that you don't like. Um, we were able to, you know, get this one. And we just, you know, you know, I went back in the win column when it could have easily went in, and you know, but it killed our spirit, of course. So, um, just sign a, you know, a sign of relief just to be able to get this win, and then um, for us in total, um, you know, I think we we just happy to be back in the win column. I'm happy to. You know, it's been a long road trip, uh, almost two weeks now, so we're. Uh, we're trying to push through it and, 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 and continue to play the right way while we get wins. Um, the long road trip can get to anybody, you know, especially when you're away from your home and your family for a very long time.